Sydney Airport operates two parallel runways, which are closely spaced at 1,037 metres apart. Through using a procedure called Independent Visual Approaches, or IVAs, two aircraft can be on adjacent final approaches at the same time. This allows for more efficient use of the runways so that more flights can pass through Sydney Airport than without them. They use internationally recognised procedures to ensure the safe operation of aircraft. They may be used at Sydney during parallel operations in the runway 16 or runway 34 direction. When meteorological conditions allow, an IVA may be initiated from a heading to join final or from a straight-in instrument approach once the pilot is visual. International aircraft can only conduct an IVA when established on final approach and visual. The procedures are safe and efficient to perform, however, a thorough understanding of the rules and procedures by all pilots is vital. So, as a pilot, what are the main points for you to remember? When being vectored for an IVA, look for the runway early. Once you have visually acquired the assigned runway, report the runway in sight as soon as possible. This is a required condition by ATC for separation purposes. Remember that a runway in sight is different to the visual call as it relates to the specific runway you are assigned to land on, as opposed to the whole aerodrome environment. Remain on the director frequency until you are instructed to contact the tower. If you transfer too early to the tower frequency, the Sydney director controller may not be able to contact you should they need to issue an instruction, provide traffic or other critical information. If for any reason you cannot establish or maintain contact with director, you must initiate a turn to intercept and track the extended centre line of the assigned runway. It's critical that you do not pass through final unless you are specifically directed to do so. ATC often see pilots unsure of whether they should intercept final if they haven't received the intercept instruction. This includes instances where radio congestion or failure occurs, which, as you know, is not uncommon. Pilots are then passing through the centre line, which increases the risk of a loss of separation or confliction with another aircraft on the adjacent runway centre line. This can contribute to an increase in ATC workload, as ATC must act quickly to identify and manage any potential conflict. This may draw the controller's attention away from other traffic management and lead to delays for you and other airspace users. It's also important to make sure you fly accurate heading when being vectored to final. Noting that the vector to join final will not be greater than 30 degrees, however, ATC will correct for wind. Ensure you are managing your airspeed and autopilot performance when in use as we commonly receive feedback that late autopilot mode selection contributed to an aircraft passing through the centre line. Be ready to take over manually, if necessary, to ensure the aircraft accurately intercepts final. When conducting an IVA from a base leg heading, it is important that you do not delay the assigned turn and do not use a low angle of bank. Adhering to all of these procedures will ensure that you remain on course and minimise the risk of conflicting with another aircraft or compromising the efficient flow of other traffic. Finally, keep in mind that other aircraft will be operating on the adjacent approach, so keep a watchful eye and ensure your awareness of the proximity of any traffic on the adjacent runway final. Traffic information will be provided when operating within one nautical mile of another aircraft on final approach. Remember to read your AIP book and the DAP East, including the Sydney IVA user guide and ensure you thoroughly understand the procedures prior to operating into Sydney Airport. If you've any questions or you'd like to provide us some feedback, please email us at safety.liaison at airservicesaustralia.com. Thanks for watching. Have a safe flight.